Welcome to Movie Recall. In today's video, we'll be going through the 2017 fantasy romance film, The Shape of Water. It's time to recall. Let's get started. Turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead. The film begins with the dream of the main character, where her reality is submerged in water, reflecting her dual nature, which will be revealed fully throughout the story. Her alarm goes off and everything returns to normal as she wakes. Eliza Esposito, a mute woman that lives an uneventful life, starts her wake-up routine before work by running the bath and putting some eggs in boiling water. As the timer for the eggs ticks, she takes a refreshing bath. Later, she packs her dinner and makes an extra plate for her next-door neighbor and close friend. Eliza gives Giles the food and sits with him for a moment, watching an old musical on TV. They both enjoy the dancing, and when she leaves, Eliza dances in the hallway on her way out. Leaving the building, she runs into her landlord, who also runs a cinema theater in the building, then proceeds to the bus station to catch her ride to work. Eliza arrives at the super-secret government research facility for the night shift, where her co-worker and best friend Zelda keeps a spot for her in the line to punch her time card. The two women proceed to do their job as part of the cleaning staff until they reach a special secret lab housing a pool. Fleming, the chief of security, introduces Dr. Hofstetler as the main scientist responsible for overseeing the new asset that is to arrive in that lab. As Fleming sets up the importance of the asset, it arrives in a pressure tank accompanied by a government agent, Strickland. While the men from the facility coordinate with him, Eliza has a little look-see in the tank after she hears the creature howling from inside. It reacts to her touch on the tank, alarming Hofstetter of their presence and prompting them to get out of the lab because the creature had become agitated. The next day, Eliza and Giles go to his favorite restaurant to get key lime pie. Giles has a little chat with the bartender, thinking that he might have a chance with him in the future. In the next shot, he and Eliza are eating the pie at his place, making it apparent that the dessert is awful and that he only goes to that shop for the guy. The following night, Eliza and Zelda are cleaning the washroom when Strickland comes in. He washes his hands before he pees, then does his business while the women are still there. Eliza wants to move the cattle prod he has left on the washroom counter, but he tells her not to touch it, explaining how powerful and dangerous it is. Then he introduces himself and explains why he doesn't wash his hands after going, something that should tell them a lot about his character. Before he leaves, Strickland kindly greets the women, making it seem like he's taken a little bit of a liking to Eliza. Zelda hates him already. Later, the two are taking out the garbage from the hallways when they hear the door from the lab where the asset was taken open, then see Strickland coming out of there bleeding. The other scientists and a few MPs run over to help him and contain the asset while Zelda pulls Eliza away from the scene. Moments later, as they're eating dinner and talking about what they just witnessed, Fleming comes over to get them so that they can clean the lab. When they get there, they find the lab in an awful, bloody state, but they continue to mop it up. Suddenly, Eliza finds Strickland's bit-off fingers and sticks them in a paper bag while Zelda goes to get Fleming. Eliza finally gets a chance to see and meet the amphibian man they've been keeping in there. Zelda comes back with Fleming and Eliza gives him the paper bag with the body parts. The following morning, Eliza tells Giles everything about what happened, but he doesn't believe her about the creature. He shows her the latest ad he had painted, which needs to be taken into his former boss and hopefully get paid or his old job back. When Giles meets with the boss, he tells him that he needs to repaint some of the details per the client's instructions. He also tells Giles that he'll see what he can do about his job. That night, Eliza goes to work and heads immediately to the lab to see the creature again. She hears him in the pool and figures out a way to get him to come out. Eliza cracks an egg and it shows up above the water. Then she lures him over and he slowly comes out of the water to take the egg. When she tries handing it over, the amphibian man freaks out, so she puts it down, gesturing the word in sign language. He calms and takes the egg, abruptly jumping back into the water. Zelda catches Eliza coming out of the lab and tells her that Strickland wants to see them both in his office. In the next shot, the women are already there for a long, awkward conversation with Strickland, who wants to know even more about them, and especially Eliza. He reads in her file that she was left orphaned as a baby, and Zelda tells him that Eliza was found by the river in the water. Strickland wants to thank her for finding his fingers, prompting her to return his wedding band back to him as he explains the surgery in which the doctor stitched his fingers back. He realizes that she's mute but not deaf, so he asks if the scars on her neck are the reason she can't talk. Eliza doesn't think so because she wasn't able to speak since she was a child. Before they leave, Strickland tells them to keep away from the creature in the lab, which he took from South America and dragged back to the US. He cautions them that while the creature may look similar to a human, that it's still a monster. The women leave when Strickland gets a phone call from a general, informing him that he will be visiting the facility soon. Meanwhile, the creature reminisces over Eliza, repeating the sign for an egg. The following night, Eliza waits for the scientists to leave the lab, then takes out a record player from her cart and places it next to the pool. 
She plays music for the amphibian man and serves him a single egg while she also takes a bite from her sandwich. He takes the egg without surfacing, so she pauses the music to make him come out and join her. Surely enough, the amphibian man pokes his head out, grunting, and Eliza unpauses the record. She teaches him the sign for music, and he learns it fast, enjoying the music and their time together. Their dates continue in the following nights, coupled with boiling eggs and music, then eventually graduating to dancing. Hofstetter walks in on them one night when he goes to bring the creature its dinner, but he doesn't interrupt them. He realizes that he has come upon something significant about the asset, so he contacts his real bosses and meets with them at a separate location. After sharing the password with security, he's taken to another location to meet with the main Soviet agent. Hofstetter gives him all his notes on the creature and a blueprint of the lab so they can plan its extraction. He's adamant about going forward with the extraction sooner because he thinks the creature is an intelligent being, able to communicate. The agent promises to pass that along to their superiors. Eliza goes back to work, taking care of the laundry for the facility, where she learns how she can disable the security camera if she needed to. Later, she covertly enters the lab and finds the creature chained up and badly wounded. Eliza wants to help, but hears Strickland coming back and promptly hides in the lab. The amphibian man screeches as Strickland comes back inside. Strickland taunts him and tortures him with the cattle prod remorselessly, disturbing Eliza as well. The general arrives at the lab and immediately is stunned by the size and look of the creature. Strickland tells him that the native tribes in the Amazon where he found it worshipped the amphibian man like a god. Both Strickland and the general think that he doesn't look like much of a god when Hofstetler checks him and asks why he's bleeding. The scientist tells the general that the creature can alternate between two entirely separate breathing mechanisms, making him a very special and unique living organism that can help future scientific progress. The general and Strickland make fun of both him and the creature when Hofstetler notices Eliza in the lab. He also realizes that the amphibian man is having difficulty breathing since he's been out of the water for too long and pleads with Strickland to get him back in. Strickland, however, continues with his presentation, telling the general that they need to vivisect the creature if they really want to know more about it. Hofstetler disagrees, and when the creature passes out, he orders the men to take him to the pressure tank, then leaves with Strickland and the general to discuss the next steps concerning the asset. Eliza hears it all and frantically follows them back to Strickland's office, where she learns that the creature will be killed and dissected. Later, Eliza tries to acquire Guile's help to get the creature out of the facility. However, he doesn't want to have anything to do with it, fearing that they'll be breaking the law. Eliza finally admits to her love for the amphibian man who she thinks sees her the way no one has seen her before, as a person with no deficiencies. Even after her speech, Giles isn't convinced, saying that the creature isn't even human, so he leaves the apartment in a hurry. Eliza storms after him, signing that if they don't help him, they won't be human anymore. Giles ignores her plea again. In the next shot, he meets with his boss who tells him that the corrections aren't even necessary because the client went in another direction and says that he will never be hired back. Later, Giles goes back to the restaurant to see his bae, but unfortunately, the moment he makes a move on him, he learns that not only is the man not gay, but also a massive homophobe. Even worse, as an African-American couple walks into the restaurant, the man is revealed to be a massive racist too, completely disappointing Giles on all possible levels. Feeling what it looks like to be treated like an animal in his own skin, Giles finally grows a conscience and goes to Eliza to tell her that he will help her after all. Meanwhile, Hofstetler meets his Soviet contacts again to inform them that the creature will be vivisected. His boss tells him that he has two options, either to delay the procedure, which is impossible, or use a tool to cut the power in the facility, giving him enough time to kill the creature himself. The scientist hates the alternatives because his primary obligation is to science and not any country's political moves. However, his boss tells him he has no other choice. Simultaneously, Strickland buys an expensive car in a color he hates just because the man at the shop tells him it's the cool new thing. That night, when Hofstetler takes care of the amphibian man, Eliza stakes out the lab and its exits to figure out a way to get the creature out of there, and Zelda catches a glimpse of her planning something. Giles prepares his van to make it look like one of the laundry vans that do the pickups from the facility. Later, he and Eliza go over the plan, which is to use fake documents to get to the lab by 5 a.m. while she takes care of the cameras and gets the creature out in a laundry cart. Meanwhile, Hofstetler prepares the poison to kill the creature, clearly unhappy about it. Eliza goes back to the staff locker room just as everybody gets ready to leave, but she stays behind and gets to the back to the loading dock to move the camera. As she's doing that, Hofstetler makes his final plea to Strickland not to kill the amphibian man. While they argue, he sees that Eliza's moving the cameras on the monitor, and when he realizes that Strickland won't budge, he decides to help her instead. Eliza is already preparing the laundry cart for the creature as Zelda waits for her to come by the elevators, then stays back and goes searching for her when she doesn't show. Eliza goes to the lab with Hofstetler already waiting there for her. 
She takes the amphibian man out of the water, and Hofstetler approaches, giving her the keys to the chains. He tells Eliza what she needs to do to keep the creature comfortable, and gives her a special mixture to put in his water to keep him alive. He also tells her that he'll disable the power, which will give her five minutes, then he'll meet her at the loading dock. While Eliza is rolling the creature out of the lab, Giles drives over there and Hofstetler manages to find the main power fuse. Giles arrives at the loading dock, but is stopped by the MP at the gate, while Hofstetler sets the timer on the gadget to cut the power. In a fast sequence of events, Eliza brings the creature out and Zelda stops her, while Strickland sees the van on the security camera from the gate, suspecting that something is wrong and calling the MP. He runs over there as the MP points a gun at Giles to step out of the vehicle, when suddenly the power goes out. Hofstetler hurries Eliza to get the creature to the loading dock, and Zelda finally decides to help. Then he kills the MP so Giles can have a clear path to get to Eliza. The four of them get the amphibian man into the van and Giles drives off, leaving Zelda and Hofstetler behind. Giles crashes into Strickland's car because he's mesmerized by the creature's beauty, giving the security enough time to catch up to them and to start shooting. Fortunately, the escape van made it out of the facility, and Strickland is pissed. Later, Eliza and Giles get the creature comfortably into her bathtub so he can start breathing. They both rejoice because their plan worked as Strickland investigates the chain of events that allowed the creature to escape. The following morning, Eliza forges a new plan on how to set the amphibian man back into the ocean. She'll have to wait for the October rains to come and release him in the canals, so she writes it down in her calendar. Later, Eliza has a nice moment with the creature, showing their growing bond. At night, they all go back to work, pretending it's business as usual. Strickland questions Eliza and Zelda, then realizes that whoever planned the escape could not have been a single member of the cleaning staff and dismisses them, convinced that the creature was grabbed by highly trained agents. Meanwhile, Giles takes care of the amphibian man in his apartment, but when he falls asleep, the creature hears the TV and leaves the bathroom. The amphibian man sees one of Giles' cats, then hunts and eats her, getting caught by Giles in the act. Giles yells at him to stop, scaring the creature terribly. He reacts by attacking Giles as well and running out of the building. Before Eliza and Zelda leave work, Hofstetler gives them another care package for the creature. Eliza tells him about her plan to release him and calls him a good man. Suddenly, she gets a phone call from Giles that the creature ran away, so she gets back to the apartments as fast as she can. Eliza finds the amphibian man in the downstairs cinema, drawn there by the sounds of the films, puzzled by what he's seeing. They have a touching moment together, and then come back to tend to Giles. The creature has already learned that the cats are off the menu and tries to make it right with Giles for eating one of them. He places his hand on Giles' head and his wound, glowing magnificently, signifying that something magical is happening. Meanwhile, Strickland calls Hofstetler to his office, questioning him because he suspects his involvement. Eliza and the creature continue to bond and fall in love. One morning, Eliza accepts his advances and walks into the bathroom, stripping her clothes, suggesting they will get intimate together. The next night at work, Zelda catches her smiling and figures out she had slept with the amphibian man, so Eliza explains how it all worked. Zelda is shocked and says never trust a man, even when he looks flat down there. Hofstetler gets a visit from his Soviet comrades, who question him about the amphibian man as well, falsely thinking that he went ahead and killed it. He can tell that they're a little suspicious as well and gets ready to defend himself, but they leave telling him that they'll contact him when they have his extraction plan. As time goes on, Eliza and the amphibian man continue their loving affair and she almost floods the entire building by creating their own little aquarium in their bathroom. Giles catches them in the act, stopping the flood from getting worse, but he relays no judgment. Moreover, he might be starting to believe the creature really is a god, considering it healed both his wound and made his hair grow back with a simple touch. Hofstetler finally gets the call from his comrades to meet them for his extraction, and Eliza checks the docks because the rains had started. So when she comes back home, she realizes that the creature is getting sick being out of the water for so long. Meanwhile, Strickland gets a visit from the general who pushes him even more to find the creature faster, informing him that if he doesn't find it, he will lose his job with the government. Eliza realizes that the date has come to release the creature back into the ocean, and during their meal together, she finds a way to express her love for him. Later, she tells Zelda what's happening, and when she checks on the creature, Zelda says they must release him that night. Before Zelda leaves, she calls Hofstetler to ask him what to do, but unfortunately, he's already at the door and misses the call. Since Strickland is on to Hofstetler, he follows him when he leaves his apartment to go to the secret meeting place. Hofstetler isn't getting extracted, though. When his compatriots arrive at the meeting place, they shoot him down, but are killed by Strickland before they can finish him. Strickland tortures the barely living scientist for information about the creature and learns that it was the cleaning staff who managed to fool him and release the creature. 
Upon learning that, Strickland goes to Zelda's house to question her about it, but finds out the truth from her husband since she wasn't willing to give up her friend. As soon as he leaves, Zelda calls Eliza to tell her that he's on his way. Eliza and Giles make it to the canals before Strickland gets to her apartment and are ready to say goodbye to the creature forever. Unfortunately, Strickland sees the date that Eliza has written in her calendar and follows them there, so before the amphibian man can jump in the water, he shoots both him and Eliza. Giles knocks him over, stopping him from shooting further and giving the creature enough time to heal his own wounds. The amphibian man gets up and promptly confronts Strickland, who shockingly says that the creature is a god before the amphibian man slashes Strickland's neck open. As Strickland is dying and Zelda arrives at the dock with the police, the creature takes Eliza in his hands and jumps in the water. Zelda and Giles watch them go, silently saying their farewells. The creature heals Eliza in the water and helps her start breathing through the gills on her neck, which were never scars. They live happily ever after. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.